everyone welcome to gem chem now today's video is on covalent bonding part 6 video and here we are going to deal with atomic inversion and Berry's pseudo rotation now before starting already five videos are uploaded in channel you can watch it i will give the link in the description box as well as the i button present above this video and if you're new to gem chem do not forget to subscribe the channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates now let us start so from the word only atomic inversion we can understand that there will be inversion of a atom right so we will start with an example to understand better if we consider ammonia moiety then we know that ammonia has three hydrogens around it and a lone pair right so this lone pair is present in sp3 hybridized orbital what happens is if you consider this hybridization like this here is one, two, three. These total consists of sp3, right? And here we have 2s and 2p. These are the three electrons which are taken up by each hydrogen to form a sigma bond, right? Now, if the case happens such that one of these electrons from the lone pair jumps into the last pz orbital, then what happens is that there is a formation of planar trigonal transition state which looks like this. Here is our lone pair in Pz orbitals and three hydrogens are present just like this. And this is our transition state. So in that case we have this as Pz. Here there is a change in the bond angle from 107 0.5 degree to near about 120 degree again after a certain time this happens that is after it jumps this electron which was present here jumps into the 2p orbital we get a different kind of hybridization that is this is here and there are two so, in this case, there is a sp2 hybridization. And again, after some times, there is complete inversion of the structure. So, here we have nitrogen, hydrogen, and these hydrogens present above the plane. And here also hydrogen. And the now lone pair is again rehybridizing to form sp3 hybridization. So, here there is a flip in the structure which is very important to understand and that's why we say that there is an atomic inversion. There is a change in the bond angle in formation of transition state and again regaining of the same bond angle but the structure gets inverted. Now this is an important question. Just like ammonia we have pH 3 but among ammonia and pH 3 which will undergo atomic inversion at faster rate. Now if you have followed the previous video we have already dealt with the pH 3 and we know the bond angle in pH 3 is near about 94 degree. So if we try to draw the mechanism of inversion it will look like this. These are the three hydrogens present and Again, there will be formation of a transition state, which is this one with a lone pair in the Pz orbital. And here is our hydrogens. And ultimately what we get is the flipped structure, which is like this. Right. So, if we observe here, it was 94 degree here. But here it has become 120 degree. So large change in bond angle. Previously we had seen that it was 107.5 degree to 120 degree. And here it is 94 degree to 120 degree. So this performance is much difficult than the previous one. So from here only we can understand that ammonia will undergo atomic inversion much faster in rate than pH 3. Right. So, let us see from the proposed mechanism which we have seen of atomic inversion of ammonia and pH 3. It is evident that during the formation of transition state of ammonia, 
the NHN bond angle has to increase from 107.5 degree to 120 degree. In case of pH 3, HPH bond angle increases from 94 degree to 120 degree. In pH 3, the phosphorus atom is not hybridized as we know. Thus, in order to reach the transition state, the bond angle of pH 3 increases to a greater extent. According to that, we will be having higher energy of activation for that, right? As I have told you, and hence, slower the rate of atomic inversion of pH 3. And this is very important. Now, at the last of this video, I will give you two questions to answer related to this one, okay? Now, let us go to the second topic of this video, that is Berry's pseudo-rotation. Now, from this only, we can understand that there is a feature of rotation or change in the dimensions for a particular molecule. And first, we will look into an example. So, see here, we take the example of PF5. Now, we always know that the structure of PF5 is TBP, right? Trigonal bipyramidal. So, it looks like this. P, F, F and here F. And the two axial bonds are a little bit longer, right? So, we can mark these as A and A, that is axial, and these as equatorial, right? Now, what happens is that though we know that PF axial must be greater than PF equatorial, but when we take the help of NMR measurement, N MR measurement that is nuclear magnetic resonance which helps us to understand the atoms better we see that all these PF bond lengths are same same in length what happens is that if you consider a sphere like this and if you draw the structure here as this is the central atom and we have our equatorial atoms here, here and another one here, okay. And the axial atoms here and here. And then we try to join it. This will be like this and these will be up and down, right. And this is our sphere that is which is showing the middle plane. What happens is that this particular axial one tries to come downwards. Similarly, this particular axial one comes to the upper position and these equatorial ones which are present here, these equatorial atoms, what happens is that these try to move towards different sides away from each other and the most important thing which is present here is that this atom this atom acts as a pivot atom ultimately what happens is that it looks like this somewhat this is our sphere and our central atom is present here the two equatorial ones which we had drawn previously, leaving the pivot atom has shifted towards us and another has gone much away from us. Similarly, the axial positioned atoms have tilted somewhat like this. And what we ultimately get is like this structure. Here is the front atom, here is the back atom, this is our pivot atom. And these are two up and down atoms. If we join it together, it looks like this. Okay. And the transition state is somewhat DSP2 hybridized, squared pyramidal in nature. And what ultimately it looks like is this. If this is a pivot atom, we have a central atom present here. And the other four atoms are looking like this having equal distances and this rotation, this particular movement is known as Perry's pseudo-rotation and this is very important to understand. 
what happens is that these two axial bonds move up and down and these two equatorial bonds tries to push themselves away from each other as a result the structure becomes somewhat like square pyramidal with dsp2 hybridization so the bond lengths appears to be as same so you have to understand that in pf5 one of the equatorial fluorine atom behaves as a pivot atom and there occurs exchange between two pairs of axial and equatorial fluorine atoms via the mechanism which we have seen that is pseudo rotation it was proposed that the rate of pseudo rotation is extremely fast at room temperature and it is even faster than time required for nmr measurement and so this cannot be detected by nmr thus nmr practically sees a time average structure where all the pf lengths appear to be equivalent okay now we will see another example that is we will explain whether the nmr will be able to distinguish between the axial and equatorial bonds for methyl pf4 or me2 pf3 so if we try to draw the structure see methyl will always be present in the equatorial part so here also there is a probability of pseudo rotation right but in case of m e to pf3 we have one of the positions occupied by methyl right so in this case rotation is prohibited as a result of which we can distinguish between f axial and f equatorial in this case so let us see that in case of me pf4 the structure is trigonal bipyramidal and the methyl group will occupy the equatorial position Benz rule if methyl group behaves as a pivot atom then the equatorial axial exchange between two states of f atoms will be favored so you have to understand that always there is a pivot atom so these two methyl groups are fixed and we will not consider them the nmr will not be able to detect axial and equatorial bond differently as the time for exchange is very fast now if we consider for the next one the structure is same with both methyl groups at the equatorial side in this case even if one of the methyl group behaves as a pivot atom the simultaneous equatorial and axial exchange will not be allowed this is due to the fact that the methyl group cannot occupy an axial side so exchange cannot occur because there is a preference to more electronegative fluorine atom and we have seen apicophilicity as well as benz rule thus in this case pseudo rotation will not occur and the nmr will show distinction between axial and equatorial bonds right now try to solve this question that is first one is that if we consider these two moieties and this one these are the lone pairs present ph me me which will undergo inversion faster this is important try to answer the question and another one is that why the atomic inversion is much slower in case of this i mean why the atomic inversion is slower in case of this amine these are the two checkpoints question so this much for today hope this was helpful thank you for watching do not forget to like share subscribe and comment